All right, welcome to the March 4th and OnCred's working group meeting of 2024. Um, looks like we won't have any updates on the BCDM work, W3C BCDM work, um, but uh, I do want to talk about the presentation flow, um, cover um, in that, uh, Victor, your issues, um, Mike, talk about the pluggable signatures work you've done, and then um, some ideas on the Hyperledger mentorship program so we can nail that down. I want to get a, a submission in as soon as possible. Um, we're recording, so we'll post the recording after, and uh, others that can't make it will be able to listen. Um, reminder, this is a, a Linux Foundation and Hyperledger Foundation meeting which means the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, as is the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Um, let's see, am I editing yet? No. Tweak that down so I can see that. I'll post this in chat in case anyone wants to help update or add their name to the list of attendees. Yeah, I'll keep chat over there in handy. All right, let's get into the topics. Um, uh, announcements, um, they're in the, um, in their um, uh, announcements, th there is a upcoming zero knowledge proof um, webinar in April and as well in April, IIW is coming up. Um, anything else that people want to talk about um, in this meeting? Is there any other topics? Ah, oh, Martin is here. Good. Oh, and Golda too. Good. Okay, maybe we will have an update on things. Okay. Um, let's jump into the agenda update on the W3C VCDM work. Um, Credo Bifold Project Progress, Martin. Do you want to go over how things are going? Um, yeah. So uh, the PR is merged into Credo now, um, but we're still waiting for the uh, 0.5 release, right? But it's just, okay. it's available in an alpha release okay. right now. Um, any progress on the bifold or thoughts on how you're going to progress with that? Um, I'm currently working on that but I okay. haven't made too much progress yet. I was able to to update the agent to 0 0.5, but okay. uh, I have some trouble getting everything working. Okay. All right. Um, feel free to um, contact the Bifold team and, and if there's any issues with that, and uh, we'll try to help out as much as possible. Um, Golda, do you want to give an update on where things are with uh, the Akapai progress? Um, I see Peter's here. I know he just got to London, so I'm not sure. If... Peter, are you able to talk? Because I know you've been more closely supervising the team. Um, he's on, Only his auto, autopilot is uh, here, so wait. he's not actually so, here. All right. So I have been, been watching, but not closely on it. So there's two okay. complications. I apologize from our team. Uh, Tuna, as you know, is, is in Myanmar and he has to evacuate quickly. So um, I've heard. a slight uh, slight delay with that, but he's still been, they've been working on it. I've been seeing them running tests. And the last I saw was they were having a little bit of difficulty getting some of the tests to pass. So we should be quite close. I know we're aiming okay. for that and, and they have that in mind. Um, I will go look at the code and see if I have anything else specific to report, but I do know that they've been working towards the sixth and that they're their issue is with the tests. Okay. Um, I believe there, um, the plan is there's a, a ACAPUG, um, ACAPI users group meeting tomorrow okay. um, at the hour after this. And they're, they're I, as I understand it, they're planning on presenting at that. Okay. Okay, super. I will so, double check with everybody that we can. Uh, Kenny has mainly... Yeah. And running the test and he will be able to be there regardless of the rest of the team and, and okay yeah we'll make sure we get that excellent okay and i know i'm pretty sure they're meeting with ian as well today and ian's been monitoring and and so on so ian on our side so good yeah appreciate okay that. okay thank you 
uh, gold. Okay, next, uh, I wanted to do a presentation. This came up. Um, Victor um, from the University of Toronto has been working on an Arcreds V2, has helped out in producing some um, um, like things like debug statements so we can see the objects and, and other work. He's got a, a, um, a Python notebook that allows him to run things, uh, run the um, crates and um, has produced some interesting things. He raised a question the other day on Discord for Mike and I on um, presentation. And so that got me into thinking about, and I did a presentation on the flow for an on-creds V2. So I thought I would present that and then we can use that to drive off both um, the ideas for this and then as well, hoping, um, so uh, might get your feedback on it and then um, make sure we cover Victor's um, questions uh, as well in this, as part of this. So this is all about an on-creds V2 and pres uh, presentations. So the idea is how do we get the flow? Um, Topics I want to cover, um, presentation request format, what we're going to use, um, adding different ZKP types into the presentation request, inserting ZKPs into the presentation itself, and then cover a bit on revocation and link secrets. So um, the presentation request format has multiple options um, that we could choose from, um, and on creds V1. Um, and on, uh, so it, that format is relatively well known. Um, we've got a full section in the V1 spec of what a presentation request looks like and how it works. And so, um, that's a possibility we can use. Um, it allows for, uh, has, has, I'll, I'll cover the different attributes as we go along. Um, diff presentation exchange is what is being used um, in the um, W3C VCDM work in uh, an Arcreds V1. So that is another alternative. It is a fairly well used um, uh, presentation request and presentation supply format. Um, has a lot of the um, capabilities we would want. Um, and so it is, uh, and and is used by a variety of communities, including Open ID for VCs. Um, so those that's a good way to do it. And then there is the N on creds V two, which is, I think, a little different. And so I've kind of got a, a proposal for how uh, I'd like to see that used, and and an idea. And and Mike, I'll, I'll be looking to you. So goals is reusing existing approaches as much as possible. Ideally, we could upgrade from a non V1 to V2 and sort of evolve the, the V1 presentation request without doing a radical change or likewise update to diff presentation exchange. So we're reusing the existing diff presentation exchange approach and taking use of that. Um, obviously, those two approaches would have to be somewhat extended. I'm pretty sure to presentation exchange, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I presume it would need to be extended to support the new and on creds V2 capabilities. Um, make sure that we've got um, the way to request certain types of um, v, um, ZKPs to be there. And then we definitely wanna be able to have multiple credential handling in a single um, presentation request presentation. So we want to be able to request multiple credentials in one go and get them back in one go. Um, and on creds V1 has this format. Um, the, the key thing there is um, you've got a requested attributes and a requested predicates as two separate ways. You can have multiple um, sets of attributes in there. Um, you can specify the names of the claims you want to have. Obviously, because an on v1 only supports a flat list of attributes, then it's it's good enough to just have the list of attributes. Um, restrictions um, allows you to focus in on exactly what credential or credential type you are looking for. 
So the restrictions include, um, I believe it's seven different items, um, schema name, credef, na uh, credef ID, um, schema ID, schema issuer, credef issuer, or the issuer of the credential itself, and then things related to specific names and values of, na of, of claims. So specific claims and, and values of claims in those restrictions. So those are the things that restrictions can be. You can have self-attested things. Um, you can have uh, specify revocation related to um, either all of the attributes, uh, all of the requested attributes or a specific set of restrict, um, uh, a, a specific um, credential and predicates, which likewise allow you to specify the only type of ZKP predicate supported, which is a, a, a numeric expression, and then the value, the claim, the, the um, operator, and the value you want to compare. But you can also have the same types of restrictions, so that allows you to focus on it. Um, more extensive example is available here, but those are the capabilities you get with the V1. Um, issues for V2 is insufficient ZKP expressions. Obviously, the single predicate type is not enough for all the different ZKPs you can have. Um, the revocation handling of a range has been problematic from the start, and so it would be nice to clean that up. Um, that's been a pain for um, implementers what, what, over time. What is, that? what is that? Can you elaborate? I don't know what that is. The, the this yeah the the uh, this uh, basically having a range is is not very useful the the two use cases you want is i'm i the the main two use cases you want now is i want a a current i'm not revoked now or i want uh, a time some time in the past the idea oh, of the range gotcha yeah it's yeah. the timestamp the idea of the range was um, a, a a verifier could say, "Oh, I'm willing to accept you know the last five days or something," and they could put a range in. But that just confused people. So it's not technically wrong. It's just it's it, it just was not helpful. Um, made things more complex. Well, so all of those should be fixed in V two. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more I'm talking the request format. The, gotcha. Okay. You know how would we evolve this? to support V2. We would have, you know, ZKPs, revocation handling, obviously support for complex names, um, JSON structure, um, basically in there, and possibly ands and ors and restrictions. There is some of that, but the this one use case that actually comes up a fair amount, I want to allow one of many VCs to be used. I want, I want to enable, um, you know, these fields, from these different types of, of um, VCs that are actually different, but they have similar names, stuff like uh, that that came up, but it's not that crucial, but it did come up in um, in our, our, our attempts to deploy things. Um, the second example is the diff presentation exchange. So again, we have um, a more comp uh, complete example um, where we have a real world um, in here, um, you're able to request, uh, you have paths, so it supports um, structured. You can specify which which fields you want out of it. You can um, specify the issuer and, and various things like that. You can do expressions. So there is some support for um, predicates um, and I'm just not sure how rich that support is and how, how that compares with um, what we've got in an OnCreds V2. Um, so big issue there is just the expression of ZKPs. As I say, this is used, uh, diff presentation exchange is used fairly widely, so that's good. Um, uh, and, and so this is an obvious choice to, to move to. Um, and then finally, there's the Anoncreds V2 presentation format, um, which is an example is here. And it's basically, here's the list of claims I want to have back. 
And here's the um, information associated with those claims that I have to provide. Um, yeah, I've just realized, yeah, it was super interesting when you get into some of these, um, you know, what you've got to provide for a commitment or verifiable encryption and so on. Um, these are the, this is the information needed in the, you know, extending out either in OnCreds V1 or, or um, DIP presentation exchange to allow us to do that. Okay. Um, issues with that, it's a completely new format and not really designed to be multiples. You can provide multiples, but the presentation request format itself is, is for a single credential and you extend it out somehow and the somehow is to be determined and that's what I want to get to. The way I think this could work and, and Mike, um, Check me on this. So Verifier creates a presentation request using one of the existing approaches, either a modified and non-credits V1 or a diff presentation exchange. So that's the presentation request format that the Verifier constructs. Then the holder logic consists of, um, as it happens today, query the wallet for credentials that satisfy the request. Given an non-credits V1 or a diff presentation exchange, um, query the wallet to find the sets of credentials that satisfy the request. Once you have those, um, possible UI at this point, not really relevant to a non-creds, but in a, in a proper flow, um, you know, if you're on a wallet, you figured out what credentials you have in your phone, in your wallet, um, and you show the ones you're gonna use to respond, you might ask the user, do you want to share this data to confirm they really want to respond? And you also might want to, if multiple credentials can satisfy the request, which one do they actually want to use in this case? So if they're asking for a, a, a university degree and the person has three of them, they may uh, want to select which of the three they want to use. So the, the UI will pick a default one, likely the query from the, from the wallet will pick a, a, a default one, usually the most recent that satisfies a given um, part of the request. And then um, there's an option to say, oh, by the way, there's a bunch of them. If you want to switch, you can. And so ultimately you wind up with a selection of credentials to use. So um, uh, assuming it's a multiple credential, it could be a single, obviously, but if, if there are multiple, um, you wind up with a list of credentials, each of which will respond um, to part of the credential, credential uh, the presentation request. Then what I think has to happen is a conversion of the presentation request in its given format to the Anon Creds V2 format for constructing the presentation. So, um, this process will be given a, uh, a presentation request and the credentials you're gonna use as input constructs a, an on-cred presentation schema per source VC. And so while we still continue to use the non creds V2 format, it's sort of under the covers within the holder and it constructs it based on what's needed um, for the given credentials and um, the uh, the presentation exchange. So that's a, a conversion process. Then you generate a presentation per source credential. Then you generate a verifiable presentation with the embedded signed um, derived VCs and uh, the proof across the VCs. Mike, what do you think of that flow? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. One thing we might want to add to maybe holder processes presentation request is um, does the verifier send all of the public data necessary or should the holder retrieve it? The like holder would generally retrieve it. Okay. Um, Either the verifier has to say so somewhere along those lines, there has to be a known registry of where that's retrieved from. Yes. 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 
So I don't know where that belongs. Does it belong in the verifier saying this is where you can get it, or does the holder just know it? And then both holder and verifier kind of have a predetermined share. So that's where the um where those restrictions in an on-creds v1 and diff also has the ability to say those things. Oh, it can come from these issuers. Well, it's not just or, that. There's there's um I mean, we're dealing with verifiable encryption. Where do those keys come from? Because it could be in the yeah, auditor. Right. right. Oh, sorry. That's what I meant by we've got to modify these to in, to provide these ca the capabilities to put whatever inputs, sorry, whatever inputs are needed for them. Where, you said public. So where there's public things, they can reside. But where, where it is specific to a ZKP that they want to get, those have to come from the verifier, I believe. Because I mean, so we've got to add a allowing, capability to do that. Right. We're allowing multiple membership checks now. And so that could come from anyone that's not the issuer. There's revocation. You know, okay. that should come from the issuer, but doesn't have to. You could have a revocation manager that's separate. You know, anyway, that, that's all my point is. Yeah. So okay. non credits 2 already supports that. We just, this is all above the cryptography layer. Right. And and that's what I'm trying to get to. So I'm I'm brushing it aside with this general statement about oh we've got to have a way to express the zkps that the that the verifier wants. I'm just and glad that the, includes the, the additional data. I'm just glad the cryptographers aren't the only ones that do hand waving. <laughs> It's hand waving right now, but it's the it's the way we'll go. So I think, you know, we we definitely need to start from standardized or or you know commonly used presentation request formats, and these are the two that make sense. But we have to extend them out to include what's needed in doing the um, yeah in doing the verification, as you mentioned. Okay. Um, the next question is the ZKP handling and, and, and the big issue is what if there are multiple ZKPs, ZKPs applied to a single claim? So if you're just revealing a claim, it, you know, you have the claim name and the claim value. So if you're doing selective disclosure and you're revealing claims, that's all you do. In, in V1, we ran into the issue, um, when using the the W3C BCDM, that what happens if you have a predicate, multiple predicates on the same claim? Um, it's, yeah, the non cred B2 code will just say, hey, you know, I can't do the predicates and reveal it because there's no point in doing the predicates. <laughs> so oh, it just kind, of, just kind of results in an error right now. That's all the V2 yeah, code. Yeah, that's fine. That's not the issue. The issue is more, I want to have a domain proof and verifiable encryption on a unique identifier, like a driver's license number. Oh, yeah, V2 already supports that. I know it supports it. I'm saying, how do we request that? How do we handle that? How do we get the data back to the um, verifier in a standard way? So if we want to support the W3C VCDM, so again, this is a layer above encryption. Mm -hmm. We know we can produce it. How do we get it back in a standard way to express in the derived credential? We want to use the W3C VCDM as the way to provide the presentation, but we have to be able to have essentially multiple values for a claim. And Victor, is this the issue you were running into? Yep, this was one of them. Yeah, okay. So... The, the idea, I mean, the, the ideas are not great. They're, they're generally hacks that we put in as a convention, what I would call hacks, um, just some way to do it, which is the the claim is complex JSON item with an item for each ZKP type. Um, so you would have DL being the driver's license number as the, as the claim, and then you would have um, complex JSON that says, you know, domain proof, colon, and value, um, verifiable underscore encryption as 
uh, as uh, a name and then a colon and a value for that. And so you would basically make the the value for each claim is in itself a complex JSON item with um, potentially a a set of of names and values associated with it. And the other is you put a suffix onto each CKP. So you do DL underscore domain and you give it a value. DL underscore verifiable encryption, give it a value. Um, so the claim name is essentially repeated with a suffix on it. Those are the two um, that I can come up with. I think this is probably the easier one. Um, but it's not great. <laughs> Any thoughts, ideas? I think it would be great if I could sit down with someone who understands the W3C, whatever that name was mm -hmm. that you were saying. Yeah. Verifiable and, credential data model. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and just reconcile because mm -hmm. I feel like I know exactly what the cryptography needs and they know exactly what the data model needs and how we could reconcile the two. Yeah. I don't know if there's an expert of that here in this meeting or someone can connect me to uh, someone. I mean, this is just a, 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 for this, this is just the um, derived credential. So it, uh whoops you need both right you need both the request and the presentation Oops. yeah whoops sorry i'm all over the place where have i gone um no, let me go back let me get to here and i don't um, like you have just trying to shoehorn everything in i think if we can propose changes that are reasonable I think the the three people will go for it and say, "Oh, there's actual use case for that." Yeah. Uh, what we want to look at is here. I mean, we don't have to do it in this meeting. I'm, I'm no, I know. I'm just going to give you a quick uh, view of what it looks like. So here's a presentation where. Right there, um, where we're sharing. So the credential subject, so, so this is a presentation. It's got a bunch of stuff. And then you've got an array of verifiable credentials. And then for the data you're sh actually sharing about a credential, you've got this. So the credential subject, and then this is a claim, this is a claim, this is selective disclosure. There's th this credential actually has a lot more in it. And then finally, this age equals true. So this is a predicate. Um, so we're we're sharing a predicate and, and all we're saying is age equals true. Um, however, if age had, you know, four different, and on creds v2 zkps on it true isn't going to cut it <laughs> um presumably you'd want to have multiple values in here like the verifiable encryption value or the domain proof value in here and you'd want that to be expressed as part of the credential subject sure, and so the easy. question so the question is do you put it as a structure in here where you've got multiple yep. or do you you know, hack age underscore and something else and put it I in. I would just do age as a struct and then like yeah. have statement okay. ID and then the result true or if it's the okay. fair encryption, it's the cipher text and proof. Yep. I mean, that's how I would do it. Okay. So that would be this one. Whoops. <laughs> uh, value for claim is a complex JSON item. Okay. Yep. Well, it's, it's more I, clear. I think there is a... Manu did weigh in. Manu Sporny did weigh in a bit on this. And I think that's where he was going as well. So I think that's reasonable to do. Um, but again, he was just limited in the, in the question he was asked was limited to just the predicate. 
Um, and they do want to put it into the standard. He wanted predicates in the standard in some way, but um, wasn't able to get it there. Okay, so that's the main issue. And so the idea is we would have a complex JSON item, which we would define and say, okay, here's what the potential values are. So you've got a name value pair for each each potentially potential type of ZKP that would be there. And mm -hmm. we would put that in. And anything selectively disclosed is just disclosed. Okay, that helps. <sighs> um, revocation handling. Um, my inclination is to do it exactly the same as an on-creds V1, which is um, rather than having a, that that as we're you've shown in an on-creds V2, right now it's explicit and, and the, and a revocation is inserted by the um, issuer as a specific claim. Um, I, I would say we would want to have it um, as either on or off per source credential and that it's automatic based on that. So it, it, in other words, it's handled as a convention of how the claims is done, much like a link secret is handled in, in V1 today. So don't leave it entirely up to the issuer to name the field and what they want it to be and put it in or not. It just automatically goes in if they specify that the claim is going to have revocation or not. I think that model <clears throat> works better. <clears throat> Again, it doesn't change the the um, cryptography. It just how how the user interface, if you will, how the uh, the data flow is. <clears throat> the other thing is the verifier may or may not know if a holder has a revocable or non-revocable version of a credential. And that's where this automatic handling comes in nicely. Um, consider a request for an educational credential from any university. They're basically not saying some universities will, will and others won't support revocation. And so what credential a given holder has may or may not have revocation. And the verifier won't know until they actually get the presentation whether revocation is there. So this is definitely an issue that has come up a lot in V1 and was part of the confusion on that. If I request revocation and you have a non-revocable credential, are you allowed to present it? Well, you absolutely should be able to. It's was the issuer's decision to support revocation or not. It's not the fault of the holder. So they should be able to present that credential whether or not um, it's revocable. So that's the goal we'd have. Um, presentation may request um, inclusion of revocation. So true or for a given point in time. Um, so dropping the range um, the now is, uh, so true is similar to now. <laughs> um, and maybe there's a way to specify that. Like you can say <clears throat> zero indicates you want revocation, but it can be for any time. And then otherwise you specify a, a integer, um, being a, you know, a, a given date time, uh, a Unix time measure of, of, of what point in time you want revocation checked. Um, if the verifier knows exactly what issuer um, and credential type they're asking for, in theory, they could provide the accumulator in the request. And that's what you were thinking, Mike, right? That the the verifier could give revocation information in the request itself. Yeah. I mean, yeah. mostly the only thing he really needs, like if you're using Allosaur is the ID. Yeah. And but that, that only applies if, if you know exactly the credential type and issuer they're going to provide and anything that allows flexibility there, which I think we need to provide, this doesn't work. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to go over what that looks yeah. like. I mean, 
for the most part, if you're using, say, a blockchain for this, yeah. you're going to have a timestamp at which it was written, the ID, which is just the verifying key, and the actual accumulator value, and that's it. I mean, yeah. Really and so my thought is that the um, we're going to need the accumulator value and a timestamp associated with it or a version associated with it. And the, well, the revocation managers. The right. What's it's that? A, version is the accumulator value. Does it change? It's like a hash, right? It just changes okay. every time. There's nothing else to really do with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Because the verifier would then say, so the idea is the holder sends the verifier the time version of the accumulator used and the verifier gets it. So if the time version is the accumulator, the verifier would still confirm with the revocation manager this this accumulator does exist, right? Yeah, I mean... They can't trust the holder, in other words, to that, that the correct. accumulator exists. They have to go confirm it, right? Yes. Well, the verifier could also lie, right? And say, I want you to prove against this one. And the holder can go check, go, that doesn't exist. You know? Yeah. The same yes. Thing. Yeah. They're both happy. Okay. And then the other one is possibly the holder could ask the verifier to update their witness for the desired accumulator. Sorry, this should say to the desired accumulator. Is that right? Well, that could be done. Yeah. It, yeah that, well, that's just the verifier doesn't know if they need to update or not, right? right. Only the whole. Right. But the holder could ask the verifier to do the update. They could, yeah. Only yeah. only if they're using it, uh, Alice, or I wouldn't want them to do it for any other yes. version. No, exactly. I'm not saying for any other. And then finally, um, okay. Ideally, and, and this is is the we would use the vcdm credential status for this and this is where it gets weird the vcdm allows for multiple types of statuses revocation is one of them um for some reason there's a desire uh, i i don't quite get it but there is a desire to support other credential statuses in the vcdm and so you could actually have multiple and that gets kind of interesting how to support that. Oh yeah. Like suspended, revoked. Yes, or... exactly. But they would be alternative statuses though. They wouldn't be simultaneous statuses. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh really? Oh, you could only have one at a time. Well, I'm asking that. That's a question. Oh, I, I think you could have suspended and revoked. So yeah, I think you can actually have multiple in parallel. Yeah, that seems a little problematic because then you have a lot of combinations you have to decide what to do about. Yeah, you, exactly. you can't just have a rule, of, like there's five rules. Yeah. Now you have to have like 25 rules or more. Okay. So this is an area of research a bit is, is what does the VCDM support and why? And what are the use cases you want? Yeah, I mean, I would just make that argument very strongly because the thing is, if the people accepting them have to set 25 conditions, there's exactly. going to be a lot of confusion. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like this is, <clears throat> revocation just is very clean if you just say, we support revocation, yes or no. And which is, yeah, it's it's clean, but doesn't cover all the use cases, which I think what, what's got to be looked at in, in how the W3C VCDM works. Okay. So that's revocation handling. <clears throat> Again, this flows both on the presentation side and on the um, credential side, which is, you know, what is the claim called? Um, how does it manifest into the credential if it's revocation is supported or not? So um that's got to be the same and it's very similar to link secret handling which is again i i think we would like to support link secret automatically so it's automatically built into the claim and automatically included in the credential schema in the credentials and the presentation and always disclosed so um this is the an on creds v1 model which is there's always a link secret it's always put in so it's not um, um, it doesn't get included in the claim schema. 
it it just is automatically added um, as part of uh, as part of that claim schema without the issuer doing anything. It, when it issues a credential, there's always a link secret in there. And when doing a presentation, it always gets disclosed. And Mike, you don't see any issues in that, right? It, it can always be there. They can add additional blinded secrets or, sure. or blinded claims if they want, which is sure. the idea of the V2 extension. But but having a link secret, you're not you're okay with that? Yep, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all I had for this. Um, Victor, I don't know if that helps gets you far enough. I mean, we did get to this idea that we're going to use this first idea as a complex JSON item. We can give you, you know, you we can just pick the names for each of the items. Is that enough yeah, this for really what you helped. need? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it helps you know, cursing so yeah. Okay. Um, as I say, the most likely is diff PE because it automatically handles the JSON path idea. So you can have complex, um, um, JSON, um, in the credential itself, which is what we want to be able to do. Um, so I think we, sh we should be covered for that. Um, I'd like to get um some examples produced of of these where we have complex json but um that's going to take a little bit of work because it's got to go into the credential claim as as well okay any other thoughts comments on this all right there's all sorts of predicates that we could do. Do you want to create like a registry that says these are the current predicates and then we yes. can always add them later yep. as, as needed? Okay. All right. Because I think it would be nice to say, here's the predicates we support. Here's what they satisfy, maybe how they work at a high level and why you, you know, here's a couple of use cases for them. So. Yep. Yep. Clear reason and benefit. Yeah. Because I think when we go to the W3C, if we need to modify the data model in any way, yeah. that's useful to have. Yep. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. And I have a dog arriving. Hello, buddies. Um, okay. Um, Mike, you did the pluggable signatures PR. Um you, did you see my note that it's not, and the tests are failing? Not anymore. Well, not locally. I've pushed pushed some minor changes to see if that would fix it. Because when I do a cargo test local, they all pass. So I okay. don't know what's. Okay, I definitely. Um... Have you updated it since the other day? Because it's yeah. definitely not working. I yeah, didn't I pushed, see it. I pushed some more this morning. Oh, there it is. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't oh, see that. Oh, it's a issue. It still didn't, still didn't work. Hang on. A lint issue. That's an easy fix. Yep. You guys, and you're linting. Yeah, that's a new one. Okay, so you got that covered. You're going to have that in, and we can get that pushed. done. Just pushed. Okay, good. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Thanks. Um. Okay, so we'll have that submitted. Um, the Hyperledger Mentorship Program is coming up. So um, here's all the information. We did this last year. It was very, very successful. So we would like to do another one. Um, so um, a couple of ideas for ones to use. Mike, of the, these are ones we've talked about, um, but we only discord sent discord messages back and forth um revocation manager the implementation the or the post quantum i think are the most likely what do you think there's also they could add it bbs plus That's oh okay point. yeah what order do you prefer of these 
Probably the BBS plus and then Rusk, just those first two you have. Okay. This one you think is a stretch? For post quantum, yeah. Because okay. Um after talking with Oliver Sanders, he said they're yeah. they're still optimizing things. Okay. Okay. Um to try and shrink the size of the keys. Like I don't yeah. think anybody wants to deal with a nine megabyte secret key. <laughs> <laughs> or an eight this is the definitely this is the sexiest <laughs> if you yeah. will the one that's going to yeah. attract the most attention but if the if the underlying work is still in flux yeah we probably don't want to touch that well i think the revocation and adding bbs plus will yeah. give it a lot of attention to all of that's that true stuff. absolutely i mean these are necessary yeah, so I mean, um, you get those in and bam, it's going to be like, hey, not only can we do revocation in constant time, it's super yeah. fast, but it also preserves privacy. Yeah, exactly. Without a yeah. lot of the negatives to current things. Yeah. So, okay. Post quantum work is still progressing. I mean, heck, you see uh, NIST had to extend their competition by another yeah. couple of years. Because, Did they? A couple of years. Yeah, Interesting. Well, well Two of their methods that they actually standardized in round four got broken. So now they're like, oh, we got to go longer, <laughs> you know. Wow. So, Interesting. Um, I hadn't heard that. Okay. Well, it was like the age got broken, so they had to drop it. So as far as like key encapsulation methods, they're down to two. Signatures, they're at three. And so now they're trying to add more key encapsulation methods, which is equivalent to a key exchange. They're just mm -hmm. down to two and then... One of them that they approved, Kyber, uh, Daniel Bernstein, you know, the inventor of ED25-19, the next cha-cha, he's claiming mm -hmm. that their lowest version, 512, is broken. So, and he's written... It's messy. And he's written a few papers. Yeah, so, I mean, it's all over the place. So, yeah. as far as quantum work goes, I just wait. <laughs> so Okay. I think I this one... Area over the next year or two. Uh, this one I think is going to get done sooner than later. Um, yep. I'm yeah, thinking I this most one. Most of the time to be spent on, um, yeah, maybe the revocation stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other topics for today's meeting? All right. Thanks for attending. Um, that wraps up for today. Have Thanks, a good week. Take Thanks. care. See ya.